Okay, looks like we're recording. Okay. We're ready to start. We're ready. Okay, so welcome to part two of our professional development about uh, supporting our ML students in the ELA classroom. So as a quick overview, we're just going to go through what we went through last month. And so if you weren't able to attend last month, go ahead and check out the October, oh, I, we should have looked this up. It was October 16th, I believe, right? Oh no, it was October 18th, right before fall break. So, um, so as a reminder, our learning objective is to help teachers learn how to scaffold reading and writing tasks that support our ML students and foster classrooms that value inclusion. So the first thing was thank you. Like, of course, thank you for wanting to support your ML students. Uh, the second thing that we went over last month was expectations and really just about managing our expectations for ourselves, but understanding that RML students are coming to us with all at, at all different levels, right? And all different experiences. And we really want to honor the experiences that they have. Um, <clears throat> helping them feel like they belong. We, um, this is really great. Um, Amy talked about SLIFE students and um, our students with limited or interrupted formal education and just making sure that we get a baseline of their um, experiences, their assets that they bring with, with them. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there's great resources linked in our presentation. Um, and then act, making sure that they have access to grade level content and how important that is. And we uh, proficiency level descriptors. Right, based on the score reports that we have for the assessment that they take um, every February, it's the WIDA access assessment. Um, just making sure that we, we know where they're at. Yeah, and there's, again, there's links here for that. And then the second, the third thing we went over was whole class novels and best practices for that. And so we're going to kind of quickly go over this and we'll hit it. We'll hit a lot of these things again today. So using guided notes to support them, using cooperative learning structures. Um, when to translate, when not to translate. Yes. And if you have any questions about that, you know, feel free to reach out to Amy, um, a member of the ML team or myself. Um, <clears throat> and that ultimately translation is a scaffold and that it should be gradually taken away as students language improves. And then we talked about chunking instruction and we're gonna be, you're gonna really see this in action today. So, and we're sorry if we keep looking over to the side, we're using a second screen here, so. Okay. So now we're here to today's right today's uh, bite sized PD, mm -hmm. and Amy and I work together with some high school ELA teachers to take real assignments that they're being given that they're giving to their students, mm -hmm. and how they could modify that for their ML students. And so we created a four step process to do this. Um, we First of all, recommend that you design first. What do I mean by design first? That you take whatever activity or assignment you want your students to complete and then look for anything, any areas that they might struggle with. Um, taking into account like what, what images, what scaffolds they might need as they go, as you go along. Yeah. And, and deciding what is the absolute essential skill and what is the, the vocabulary that they're going to need to be able to access the content. Yeah. So in an ideal world, we would have plenty of time to plan and to do all this with every single lesson. However, we know that often that isn't the case. Right. And you may be teaching and you might see one of your ML students out there looking just absolutely confused. And in that moment, you're going to need to make an adjustment. Exactly. And so these four steps can work with designing first or in the moment. 
So, and we have examples that teachers have been gracious enough to share with us linked here. And we're going to um, go through one of the examples together um, after we go through the four steps. So first step is to identify the essential skill. This is the most important thing you want students to be able to learn and to do. And make sure that it's communicated. Yes, yes. What so, is the learning intention, success criteria along with that? Yeah. And often if if I have a learning intention, like um, students will be learning to identify the theme in the short story, The Most Dangerous Game. There's a lot of things that we're going to be doing in addition to just finding the theme. Right. But if we identify the most essential skill for that lesson is identifying the theme, that is what we are going to scaffold for our ML students and assess yes. for that assignment, mm -hmm. right? Um, do you want to take number two? <clears throat> yeah, uh, essential vocabulary. Um, this is identifying what is it that they absolutely need to know and then provide those definitions and you know some translations if needed and then um, access to those definitions um, as you know, they're working along. So um, you wanna try to contextualize it to not necessarily keep it completely separate, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that they're learning the vocabulary in context, but for them as a reference, I think when they're in the lesson, um, I mean, I think it provides a lot of support. Yeah, and we really want to limit it to around five words. And in last month's professional development, we talked about if we're going to provide a translation for vocabulary, we don't want to translate the word. We want to translate the definition because students will be hearing the word in English and we want them using the word in English. And so keeping the word in English, but providing that translation or an image um, if an image works for that word so that they begin to associate the English word right. with the definition. And a lot of times those words don't translate directly mm -hmm. into a student's home language. So they're going to be grasping for more anyway. So it's good to translate the definition yeah. rather than the word. And we have a word in the example that we'll show you that a lot of students might not even know what it is. So giving them a definition might not be the best thing. So um, step three is to then scaffold. So think about ways that you can support language in the lesson. Are you using images? Um, if you're asking students to speak or to write, are you providing sentence frames for them? Um, are you using word banks? Now, if one thing that I would do in the moment to support my MLs is I would come over to their desk and I would write a word bank for them just on their paper. You know, that might not have been something that I thought about beforehand or I didn't create in the assignment, but it was something that I could do in the moment to give mm -hmm. them supports. Um, translated summaries. So it's really kind of cool. Um, if you haven't explored chat GPT or any of the other AI mm -hmm. features, they have some really great translations. So I went in and I, I, uh, I did a search for, and I, I don't have it up. I should have had it up. Um, uh, give me a summary of chapter five of Great Gatsby. And then it gave me a summary. I read it and it looked pretty good. So then I said, translate this summary into Spanish. And it gave me a summary and Amy read it. So that's a pretty good summary that's in Spanish. <laughs> and then I said, okay, let's translate that into Swahili. Let's translate that into Arabic. And it was able to translate even in non-Roman letters. Um, and, you know, I don't speak Arabic, so I'm not sure how good it was, but it was a start, right? right? And so I can give a student a translated summary that gives them background knowledge and information so that when we're speaking in class in English or reading in English, they have some background knowledge about right. what we're doing. Right. And tell them, how did you introduce that? Like, did you provide that in the moment or was it most mainly at the beginning of the class, like during as a bell activity? Yeah. 
So I would give it to students at the beginning while students were working on a starter or something like that so that they could read it and they'd have time to read it um, before we got into the lesson. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think that's a great support. Yeah. Um, and then outlines. And Amy and I um, have an outline of this professional development that we've linked for you at the end. So I'm just going to show you here. <laughs> but we made just a quick outline of our own presentation, which also serves as guided notes. We have some spaces here for blanks so they could write and how to engineer the text. And Amy did a whole bite-sized PD last year on how to engineer the text. So we've linked it here for you right. um, instead of going over it again. Something I wanted to add with the guided notes is that it provides them time, students time mm -hmm. to reflect on their learning. And um, if you want to build it into, you know, your outline or your guided notes to, to provide that pause in between. Yeah. And that's really good for all students. It really is. I don't know that we take enough time for kids to really reflect and solidify the learning that they are doing or to ask questions and make connections. Right. And then step four. Explicit instruction. So um, with every task and especially for multilingual learners, they need to see the task modeled and have an exemplar of how to complete that task. So definitely starting with the I do mm -hmm. and then um, doing we do together as a class, then you all do in groups and then um, students work on that independently. Yeah. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how much students can do uh, based off of that practice and that modeling. So we're, let's take a real assignment. Um, this is from a ninth grade English class where they are using Pixar short films. I don't know if you've seen them on YouTube or they have a whole DVD of them. I love them mm -hmm. um, to understand theme. So this is a really great lesson just to begin with because it has visuals and often, I don't think any of the Pixar short films have language in them. They don't. So it's a great start, but. And you can see here where we've made notes of things that we've cut out um, or we've added, um, you know, we wanted to take the first step in um, modifying a, an assignment or a, a, a task in that finding the essential skills. So we, when we looked at this assignment, we decided we're going to cut out the, the first two on this sheet for our multilingual learners and just focus on, you know, the ones that follow. Yeah. Like, you know, the feelings of the stork or the losing of his feathers really didn't lead to the theme. But once we got to these questions, like how the stork feels about the white clouds, mm -hmm. um, what emotions he's feeling, that those two questions help lead to what was the theme. And we, as we watched the video and went through this, we knew that students had to get those two questions to really understand the theme. Okay. So if this is in the moment, and I was doing this with an ML, I might just cross out this question, right? right? Um, if I was planning it, I would probably just make theirs shorter or gray out the boxes or something. So the next step is to identify essential vocabulary. Yes. And something that uh, a multilingual okay. learner may not understand is, you know, the idea of a stork and mm -hmm. how the stork brings a baby <laughs> into the world. And so uh, I would probably in the moment as students were working through groups or, you know, in between, mm -hmm. you know, part of the video, uh, explain what the stork means. Yeah. And you could do that with Google Translate. I was actually surprised. I didn't tell you this. Like I um, recently went to Brazil and Argentina and I had entire conversations using uh, a Translate app. Nice. So it great. was something that was really great. Um, we'll have to link it here because I'm gonna I'm gonna just show it. It's, Is it Microsoft the one I showed you? I don't think so. It's this green translator app. Um, and it's 
live translation and mm -hmm. you can hit play and it will do it out loud. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one. I Is it? Do. Is it? Yeah, it yeah. It's wonderful. So, um, so you could have a really short conversation with students right then and there to explain what a stork is, because we have on here the word for stork, but that's not going to help students understand. Um, you could have a picture of a, of a stork, but if you had, you know, the picture of a stork with the, the cloth that the baby's in outside of the United States, I don't know if anybody would know what that was. I don't think so. And so an image doesn't work for this either. That's really going to be a conversation, but identifying that word and understanding that that's a really important key event or key idea, mm -hmm. key word. Something we could definitely add to like a summary for the bell yeah. ringer activity or yeah to front load before we do this activity with students. Yeah. So we also have on here, what two emotions does the gray cloud have when the stork goes to the white cloud? Um, I can't read my handwriting. Do you remember? What Nube. We... That's the word oh, yeah. for cloud in Spanish. Cloud. Yes. So we, we just... thought we could just use some engineering here. Thank you. I mm -hmm. was like, can't read my handwriting. We also, so then step three is what scaffolds would be needed. And we thought that I, and you can kind of see here, I'm pointing to my screen, like you can see it. Um, we thought here we could actually have boxes, like happy, sad, surprise, like almost like emojis that we could have students circle. Mm -hmm. um, if they're a brand new newcomer, they could understand those emotions. Um, and then for theme or central uh, idea of this video, we thought about also providing a word bank or mm -hmm. a, a bank of a phrase or two to, to for them to decide which one do they think the central theme is if they can't write it themselves mm -hmm. to provide that for them in the moment. Yeah. So you can see these are just our notes. They're not the actual modified assignment. Right. Right. Um, the other thing that I don't think we actually wrote out was to start or write in a sentence starter for each one of these. So um, this question could be the gray cloud feels blank mm -hmm. about the white clouds. Um, what two emotions? The cloud feels blank and blank, right? Or if we had a word bank, they could circle the two. And we had kind of designated this section as the I do. So the teacher would yes. be demonstrating how to complete this activity. And so then you could definitely add those in, you know, in the moment. Yes. So this is our I do. So this is step four. We're going to model this section and then stop and discuss, right? We need those pauses. Then we would do whole group on video number two. Oh, this one only had three videos. So we decided this was going to be in small groups. They would do this. And as a reminder, what do we recommend for newcomers? What groups, what group sizes do we recommend for newcomers that we talked about last month? Okay. So if you have a brand new newcomer who doesn't speak any English at all, is in, in a silent period, you definitely want to make sure that they're paired up and it will actually in a group of three rather than just a pair so that they have another good example of English and those other students have the opportunity to practice, you know, engaging in the language yeah. as well. So they can hear that <clears throat> as you go along. And when they're working in groups, is it okay if our newcomers just copy from their teammates? At this point, yes, definitely. They're going to be parroting a lot verbally and as well as in written form. Yeah, because they're brand new. So it's when you have more advanced ML students that you stop allowing that. If if they can, if they're writing and starting to speak, then let them write. And they're, they, they'll be very simple sentences and very simple um, verbal conversations. And that's okay. So then, so this second one was a group. And then individual, if they're ready. Right. And <clears throat> I don't know that I would have them fill out all of them, but maybe to just determine what the theme or the central idea is. Mm -hmm. um, they may need to go through all of the steps to get to the theme or central idea. Um, I guess it just depends on your students' abilities and what they're comfortable with. Right. Um, and then this is a really good question. 
were you able, what helped you determine the theme? Right. Right. And I think a newcomer would clearly be able to answer this, that it's the images, right. right that they're right. seeing. And I wouldn't necessarily, um, have the expectation that they write their reflection out in complete mm-hmm. sentences and maybe um, yeah. they would write it out using a mix of their home language and English mm-hmm. um, or maybe even just writing like a list of points. Yeah. So to go back, I want to come back here. Let me go back into presentation mode. Um. Oh, actually, I'm not going to go back into presentation mode. I want to go back to what we talked about last month in the can do descriptors help me proficiency level descriptors on slide nine nine thank you (laughs) yes Mm -hmm. it's these descriptors here so when you look at your students and they're level one you can look at them and see what you can expect out of them if it is single words if it's phrases and then level two sentences so that you're not asking something that they are not at a language ability to do yet. Right. Right. Um, so we'll come back here. Um, so we have five examples here that you can go through and there are handwritten notes. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Like I said, um, we, and if you want us to help modify assignments, let's do it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that, that with you. Fun. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so with all of this that we've talked about between last month and this month, one of the most important things is inclusion. Right. We want our ML students to feel included into our classrooms and to feel like they're part of our classrooms. So, and that we have the same level of expectations for them as we do our other students. So they need to have access to grade level content. Yeah. So ways that we can help them feel included is to honor their funds of knowledge. And we do this by trying to include them and elicit their learning and their understanding. Um, We talked about access to grade level content. Avoiding separating students within your class. I know often we, uh, I I go into, into classrooms and teachers are desperately trying to help their ML students. So they pair them with students who speak the same language, right? Because they want to make sure that they get the content. And then our one student ends up translating for our ML, but it's in a way you're separating them from the class. Mm -hmm. They're not talking to their fellow classmates. They're not integrated They're It's always coming through a filter. And they're losing out on the instruction. They're losing out on instruction. We definitely want to have that as an option, but not (laughs) overuse it, you know? Yeah. So thinking about ways that they can be a part of the class and then review your materials for ways that you can honor the MLs. Um, And I think this is looking at more diverse texts or I know that I um, am... Sorry, I have a little cough. I had, um, I don't think I've ever told you this. This student, I mean, he was an ML, but he was fluent in English. He was Native American and he um, was Navajo and he was silent. He would never speak in my class. And I had some time left over. And so I did a day on Native American mythology and we listened to myths and I showed some pictures Mm -hmm. and I had like said, I had brought all of the materials to make fry bread because he had said he would make it for the class. And after that day, I could not get him to stop talking, That's awesome. Um, (laughs) which was great because he felt like honored and respected. And so it was something that I, after that, I kind of, my light bulb went on and I tried to bring in more culturally relevant texts for my ML students, if I could. Absolutely. And myself being a student of color, I felt the same way growing up. And then, you know, even in just some of my college courses where professors would, you know, try to make that connection with me. And it just made me want to be more involved. In yeah. The class. 
in the class as well. So, yeah. So, um, can't remember if we had another slide. Oh, we do. So this is our quick little review with our unicorn. I love our unicorn. Yes. Um, you know, a, a lot of what we've presented, you know, in both of these sessions, I think uh, they're already doing, a lot of you are already doing. And so it's just finding ways to modify, you know, certain things based on your students' needs um, and in, in the moment. Yeah. And I think, you know, we talk about this a lot, but I'm going to reiterate it. You may not see the fruits of your labor immediately. You might not see it for months, but all of these <clears throat> little things that you're doing, if you're questioning whether or not it's helping your MLs, it is helping them and it is supporting them. So just know, know that and recognize that it's going to take time. I mean, think about how long it took us to learn how to read fluently in English. Years, right? And and so, you know. Yes. On average, they say it takes seven to nine years to be completely proficient in a language. And so definitely, I'm glad you brought that point up because it doesn't, it takes a lot of time and yeah. they're not going to see this, things happening right away. Yeah, it takes some time. So I think that was our last slide. Yes, please reach out to us um, if you have any questions. So um, does anyone have any questions for us now that we can answer for you today? Was that, was that five seconds of wait time? I think it was. <laughs> I think it was. Okay. Thanks for being here. Everything will be up on the Bite Sites PD page within a few days. And you can always go back to last month's and click on the presentation and see the presentation right away. It's the same presentation. We just split it in half. All right. Thank you. Have a great night. I have to stop recording. <laughs>